What's going on YouTube? JT is your born here and welcome back to another edition of my DC comic book reviews and in today's video we're going to be talking about Dark Crisis issue number two of seven. This one is written by Joshua Williamson with art by Daniel Sampier and this is part two of the big epic Dark Crisis crossover events. Well I wouldn't really technically call it part two considering we have various tie-ins to this event and of course we also had the prelude to dark crisis and of course there's death of the justice league and all that other fun stuff going on leading up to this particular event and what did i think of issue two i like it overall but there is some questionable stuff in here and some things that kind of left me scratching my head but overall consensus i think i enjoyed this one okay i'm not really loving dark crisis right now but i'm not overall hating dark crisis right now i do feel like that the, since this is a crisis level event it should feel bigger i should feel the impact of some of these story choices a bit more but i think a large part of why it's not quite hitting those marks is dc in general i don't understand stand like the stakes of things anymore i feel like continuity is kind of so all over the place on the one hand the justice league is supposedly dead but then you have their other titles going on right now where they're just seemingly alive when do stories take place do does continuity matter does all this stuff even matter anymore and i feel like even the characters within the stories are like yeah i mean things will be fine next week and that's not really like how you should want to feel with a big event like this i mean compared to like what was going on at the beginning of rebirth and at least the first metal i at least felt the impact of that but then obviously things changed and death metal happened and now it's just like what even is going on with dc comics anymore so let's go ahead and talk about this whole thing so pariah's whole motivation i guess is the great darkness promises him to that it's going to bring back the worlds that he lost at the sacrifice of the current mainline earth that we got going on right now uh we don't know much about the great darkness even after reading infinite frontier and all that other stuff i don't know very much about the great darkness what it is and all the stuff going on with it unless i miss something in some various tie-ins i feel like that's something hopefully we'll get in the uh next issue but that's basically prize motivation to eliminate the justice league and sacrifice this earth which then we get later on in the story and i'm left scratching my head like okay you could have eliminated the just league and the teen titans but why didn't you do that so slade of course is attacking titan's tower which has been attacked numerous times at this point uh he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with nightwing which is the best part of the issue slade is kind of cuckoo for coco puffs crazy and we come to find that he is being manipulated by pariah and the great darkness that's why he's kind of off the rails at this point in time uh and why he doesn't just kind of finish the job and why he's just kind of where he's at right now there is one cool moment here after dick beats him but like slade obviously has the titans and everyone else like in the grasp of his like league of supervillains or whatever you want to call them and john kent comes in and takes a takes a bullet and he basically saves him so i thought that was quite good in fact i think john kent in dark crisis has been written better as superman than anything else going on at dc outside of maybe that super sons tomasi issue but yeah like i don't get why joshua williamson isn't writing the superman son of kal book because clearly his superman his take on superman is far more interesting far more compelling than anything that taylor has been doing in son of kal at least i feel like you have somebody who's in over their heads and trying to stand up to be superman rather than doing something like we're gonna fight climate change in the next issue i'm like that's that's boring like why do i want to watch like read a book about like a superhero fighting climate change or whatever like political issue tom taylor has to you know like deal with or something like that i don't know i i just feel like john is a more exciting character in this thing he's written much better more interesting i actually buy his dynamic with nightwing more in this than i did anything else uh with all those retcons going on in superman son of kal -El. so yeah like i said there's some good stuff here uh be, the only some downside of dark crisis like i said you don't really feel the impact or consequences of thing for instance beast boy got shot in the head point blank range and i think okay he probably survived because him and cyborg were fused together at the end of teen titans academy but we come to find out uh that no they, they they're just not that at all which leaves me scratching my head why even had that if teen titans academy for not gonna do it? like i said if you read more of the books you're kind of scratching your head, like wait that doesn't make sense like how do they break apart then 
But anyways, so when Slade has the heroes pretty much beat, uh, he come, he brings in Cyborg Superman to fight John and all that. And like I said, there's some really good art and action in this issue. Uh, the Great Darkness and Pariah is like, do not kill the heroes, even though on the first page it's like, we gotta eliminate this Earth and all that for some whatever reason. I'm just gonna, like, say no. Uh, here, give them a chance to fight. It feels something like like kind of a parody like you'd see in austin powers where uh dr e like in the first austin powers is something like happens when dr evil captions aust captures austin and vanessa puts them in an easily escapable situation just pretend like the whole thing just happened scott is just like wait wait you're feeding him wait 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 you're not even gonna see him like through to the end he's like no scott i'm just gonna act like everything went fine why what's going on and he's like I have a gun right now. I can go in my room and shoot them. Bam, they're dead. Then they won't be a threat to you. He's like, Scott, you just don't get it. That's kind of like the vibes I'm getting with this story here. And the other villains are like, wait, wait, Slade. Like, what, what are you doing? Like, w w what's wrong with you? We, we, we have them right here. Like, let's get, finish this. And they're like, nah, let's go. So Cyborg Superman comes in, fights John and the other Cyborg. Because like I said, him and Beast Boy are now split off for whatever story reason. I mean, that was a dumb idea in general. So, I mean, it's cool that Williamson's just kind of brushing and ignoring it a bit it seems like he's kind of done that with some of the like teen titan stuff and the recent runs like what happened with damien and what's going on with this thing but then again who, what even is continuity anymore in dc comics it's just like whatever the writer wants it to be um there, there needs to be some changes at dc like we need to like like everything matters but it doesn't matter and all that like they, they need to fix that a bit uh then black adam shows up and i like the fact that john kent's like all right let's see how good of a job you're gonna do black adam black Adam's like all right i'm gonna take charge here i'm older i'm wiser you're clearly in over your head kid uh we're gonna get this shit done my way so i like that i like black adam leading the justly i think that seems like it could be an interesting story then Kyle Rayner shows up at the end, and he's reunited with Hal Jordan, and then we have the other Green Lantern, Joe Mullins. I'm not really reading Green Lantern, but I have a rough idea of what's going on there. They also make reference to the, the Flash family going and looking for Barry, which, you know, was in that whole Flash tie-in stuff with Jeremy Adams and all that. And they don't really mention what's going on in the Unjustice Dark Crisis tie-in, but that's okay. We still got other stories going on. So, yeah, but like I said, Kyle Rayner's going to get, like, his Green Lantern ring and the Green Lantern Corps is going to go try and help things out. So, there you go. That's Dark Crisis, issue number two in a nutshell. The art by Daniel Sampier, what, what can I say, is really, really good. Uh, I think it looks fantastic. I actually like the way John Kent is written in this thing compared to his own Superman Son of Kal-El book. You have a hero who's kind of forced into a situation and he's in way over his head, but at least he's trying to do the best that he can. That actually sounds like a pretty interesting story. Like, why isn't that the main storyline in Son of Kal-El? But I don't know. Let's 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 have John fight climate change because that's exciting. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I I know I'm not reviewing Son of Kal-El, but you can hear my dissatisfaction with that storyline going on. But like I said, John is so much better written in this thing. But uh, yeah, there's there's some other issues I have too. Like wh they have the heroes trapped. Why can't they just finish them off now? Which allows them a chance to kind of regroup and defeat them later. The great darkness or whatever's controlling Priya just seems kind of dumb. Granted, we don't know the full context of why they had to be pulled back for that particular reason. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt for now. But like I said, it's kind of feels like a like something you'd see in a parody like an austin powers like why why don't they finish them when they have the chance it just feels kind of hokey um but then again it's, you know it's kind of a trope you see in other things too also what was the point of shooting beast boy and then just kind of letting him live he got shot point blank in the head why not have this is the dark crisis maybe you can have some consequences perhaps beast boy actually does die uh i thought the reason he would have escaped was because of the whole illusion thing at least that would have made more sense but it's just like uh, no, he just somehow kind of survived. What? Come on. Give me a break. Like, I, I don't buy that. He got shot point blank in the head, like, in his, like, non-different form. Like, he wasn't transformed to some sort of animal. Like, he got shot point blank in the head. How is he not dead? This is a dark crisis. You're supposed to, like, have consequences. It's supposed to be a big event. Why not kill off a character like that? At least it would feel more impactful. But no, 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 it feels kind of the cheap way out. So, I mean, if this were just a standard issue of, like, Teen Titans or something like that, then I wouldn't be as, I don't know, like, critical in the sense that, like, he survived. But this is Dark Crisis. This should be big. You should really feel the impact of it. Uh, because, like I said, you put the name Crisis on a DC event that invokes 
uh, like Infinite Crisis, Final Crisis, all whatever crisis that you got in there, that should be big, impactful, but like you don't really feel it per se compared to like other crises in the past. So yeah, I, I may seem a little bit harsh in some areas. Like I enjoyed this issue overall. I, I like the artwork. I like seeing Nightwing beat the hell out of Slade. For crying out loud, when's the last time we saw Deathstroke versus Nightwing? <clears throat> For whatever reason, Slade has spent most of his time going after Batman or Damien. Why? Like, why can't Slade go after Nightwing some more? Like, why can't we have those two in conflict anymore? Which I appreciated about this issue. And plus, Titan's Tower getting destroyed, which, didn't we just see this? Uh, that building better have, they better have really good insurance on that building, because that building has been destroyed, like, numerous times at this point. Um, but yeah, there's still some things left me scratching my head. But maybe we'll have to wait and see as to why they pulled out their forces at that particular time. So, uh, yeah, Dark Crisis number two uh good stuff in there it's good character moments at times it's cool to see the characters all together doing their thing and like i said i like the way john kent is written in here more than i do in his own solo book but since this is dark crisis this should feel like there should be some sort of consequences this should feel bigger and more impactful and it's not quite hitting the mark in that regards per se and there's a few questionable story choices like when the villains have him like beat why why do you just leave that just makes you look like a complete idiot so who knows what's going on there but like i said i don't have the full context of the story but anyways what are your thoughts on dark crisis issue number two of seven let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below be sure to like this video share it with your friends subscribe to the youtube channel for more content hit the bell for notifications and be sure to come back next time as we'll be talking about the first issue of the chip sadarsky batman run and uh yeah it should be fun and exciting all right well that's all i gotta say as always take care now bye bye then and i will see you all in the next video peace